Walter McGee and Molly. Pet Milk, the first evaporated milk, presents Sibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick LeGrand, Cliff Arquette, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The show is written by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie and directed by Max Hutto, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. You know, I'm just about the luckiest guy in the world. Here I am starting a new season with one of the greatest comedy teams on the air and getting a chance to sell a product that's been a favorite in millions of homes since before I was born. Pet evaporated milk. Why, you've probably been using pet milk as long as you can remember. Quite likely you were a pet milk baby. And lucky if you were, too, because pet milk babies get a specially good start in life. Women who cook with pet milk get a break, too. Because pet milk makes everyday foods taste wonderful. Why? Because pet milk is whole milk concentrated to double richness. Only water is taken out. All the cream stays in. The result? Good whole milk that's twice as rich as ordinary bottled milk. Pet milk. Your grocer has it. Get pet milk tomorrow by the can or by the case. Pet milk, the first evaporated milk. <laughs> Yes, this Harlow. Who? Fibber. Fibber who? Oh, McGee. Hiya, pal. How's everything? What's that? You want to barbecue some chickens at your house tonight, eh? Yep. <laughs> well, I'll be there, pal. There's nobody I'd rather visit on Tuesday nights than Fibber, McGee, and Molly. Well, it looks like everybody's coming to the barbecue tonight, Molly. Now, dearie, why don't you just let me fry those chickens? No, sir, don't you fret, kiddo. I'll handle this. This is really going to be a ball. I was even thinking of getting a guitar and a Mexican sombrero and making this into a regular fiasco, you know? <laughs> you know, a Mexican picnic. You needn't worry, sweetheart. I'm sure it will be a fiasco. Which reminds me, is Dr. Gamble coming tonight? I ain't been able to locate Doc yet, but don't worry, he'll be here. Doc don't wear a 46-inch belt from passing up any free meals. <laughs> that guy can smell a hand out like he had radar on his nose. <laughs> I'll bet that right now he's probably on his way... Come in. Over here. <laughs> over here. You see, Molly? <laughs> Hi, Doc. Dr. Gamble, do come in. Thank you, Molly. Hello, vacuum top. <laughs> Where you been, Long Belly? <laughs> We've been calling you. I've been in a meeting, my boy, at City Hall. I was asked to sit on the town council today. You? Sit on the town council? Well, yep. I will say you're the only man I know that's equipped to sit on six guys at once. <laughs> We were wondering uh, what you're doing for dinner tonight, Doctor. Yeah, we're having a backyard barbecue tonight, Ducky. In the backyard. Barbecuing some chickens. Oh, that's my dish, kids. Who's coming? Any young people? <laughs> no. No, this is what you might call a middle-aged spread. <laughs> well, if you're cooking, Molly, count me in. I'm cooking. Count me out. Don't sell the lad short. He's cooked before. In fact, McGee made a meat pie last summer that every single bite of it was eaten up in ten minutes. You betcha. Who ate it? Toops' dog, that's who ate it. <laughs> Toops' dog that was, that is. <laughs> now, you mustn't disappoint us, Doctor. Everybody else is coming tonight. Don't coax him, Molly. Don't coax him. If Doc stays home, there'll be enough left over to feed eight normal people. You don't know eight normal people, Blabberhead. <laughs> And speaking of normal, I've got to get down to the hospital and bring some of my patients who aren't quite back, too. Oh, good. <laughs> you can drop us off at the hardware store, Doc. Got to get some charcoal and stuff. Yes. Now, how about the barbecue, Doctor? Will you be here? 
Well, seriously, my dear, I'd love to, but I've got to make a call. Emergency. Matter of fact, I hope to save a life tonight. Oh. Really, Doc? Whose life? Mine. I'm going to eat downtown. <laughs> Hardware stores fascinating, dearie. So full of things. Incidentally, uh, why are they called hardware stores? Because in the store where you come into it for something that they got so many things different from it that hardly anybody, including the owner, even knows if they got it, you got to look hard whereabouts in the store you think you can keep it. <laughs> Thus, hardware store. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure. Now, let me see. I'll need a bag of charcoal, long-handled fork, six boxes of matches, barbecue apron, chef's cap. Chef's cap? Mm -hmm. Isn't that going a little strong, dearie? What do you need that for? My gosh, you got to have something to beat the flames out when my apron catches fire, don't I? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I asked the silliest question. <laughs> Good day, sir. Something I can do for you? Yeah, you can quit breathing down my neck and start waiting on me. We're barbecuing some chickens in the backyard tonight, sir, and we need you... To... Well, thank you, madam. I'll be most happy to be there. <laughs> no, no, sir. I was not inviting you to our barbecue. I was saying that we need you to sell us a few things. Oh, of course. How stupid of us both. <laughs> ah, I think barbecued chickens are simply marvelous. That golden crust, that tender, flaky white meat... That delicate flavor of... Hey, 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 cut it out. I ain't had anything to eat since breakfast. I'm weak from hunger. Well, how do you do? Hmm? I'm McSneed from Toledo. <laughs> yes, and this, I presume, is Mrs. Week? Are you also from hunger, Mrs. Week? No, I'm from Peoria. Well, good for you. Say, how far is Peoria from hungry? <laughs> In our case, it was about two inches. And look, I didn't mean my name was weak. I'm just famished. Oh, I see. I suppose lots of people make silly jokes about you going around with Mrs. Week, don't they, Mr. Famish? Now, just a minute, please. I am not Mrs. Week. I'm Mrs. McGee. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were McSnee. From Toledo. No, I'm famished. Huh? No. No, I am McSnee. Well... Now that we have that all straightened out, what can I do for you today? Well, we're having a barbecue in the backyard tonight. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, it's getting to be quite a fad, I guess. There were some people in here just a few minutes ago, and they were going to barbecue some chickens, a Mr. and Mrs. Week from Hunger. <laughs> well, they invited me to come. That I... was us. That was us. And our name isn't Week, and we didn't invite you. Now, just a minute, madam. There's no use raising your voice to me. Sorry, you're talking to my wife. I am not sorry. You're impertinent. I am McSneed. <laughs> hey, Mr. Alsop, am I McSneed or am I not? You're fired. Mr. Knott, please take Mr. McSneed's place. There, you see. <laughs> Ah, this barbecue is going to be fun, Molly. I got a gift for this stuff, kiddo. If this is a gift, I have a feeling you shouldn't have opened it until Christmas. <laughs> I guess you forget what a camp cook I am. Remember last summer when we were fishing up in Oregon on the Rogue River and you said I... On the what? Up in Oregon on the Rogue River and you said I... Rogue River, sweetheart. Huh? R-O-G-U-E is rogue. Okay. I won't arg about it. You won't what? Arg. A-R-G-U-E, art. That's argue, McGee. <laughs> well, like I was saying, remember last summer up on the Rogue River up in Oregon when you said... Well, oh, hello there, Molly. Hello, McGee. Oh, it's his honor, the mayor, McGee. Glad you could come, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, when I phoned the trip, your secretary said she'd ask you, but she thought you were going to Honolulu. Cancel the trip, did you? Oh, no, no, that's just a little gag of mine, McGee, to protect myself against petty interruptions. Oh. I was determined to get some work done this afternoon, and where there's a will, there's a way, you know. Uh, you mean you uh, always make a will before you go away on a trip, Mr. Mayor? Uh, uh, no, no, Molly, I didn't mean that literally. 
the expression, where there's a will, there's a will. You know, that's a heck of a good idea, Latriv. Especially on a long trip like to Honolulu. I am not going to Honolulu. <laughs> not at all. I was using... No the reason why you shouldn't, Mr. Mayor, if your will's made up. <laughs> Listen, go ahead and have your fun. Why, certainly. <laughs> what if something does happen, like... Maybe you break your neck trying to peek into the cashier's cage at the Royal Hawaiian when they make out your bill. As long as you know your loved ones are protected, boy, you go. I didn't say anything about breaking my Royal Hawaiian peeking into... <laughs> look, look, there's an old saying. Oh, Where there's the... lots of old sayings, Mr. <laughs> Like, uh, give a crook enough rope and he'll start a cigar store. <laughs> and if you're mixed up in anything that's run by a committee, get on the committee. <laughs> <laughs> Little pitchers have big ears so they can hear a runner stealing second. Oh, 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 stop it, stop it, please. I'm sorry I mentioned anything about anything. This is the silliest conversation Oh, now, that now, I... now, relax, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Take it easy. Let's all be gentlemen, except me. Yeah, my gosh, Latriv, you're our guest, boy. Our honored guest. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anything you say is fine with us, boy. In fact, we agree with you absolutely. Making out your will before you go someplace 4,000 miles away is... I very... didn't say anything about milking out my way. <laughs> Making my woo. Oh, you... huh? When I had to go to Lulu, <laughs> when I got to Lulu, Hano... Travel to the hubble wubble weaver wubble we were why why no, I didn't you, you were the ones who said that this, I didn't have anything it, it was farthest from my I was you were on a little <laughs> McGee <laughs> Aloha, Malahini. <laughs> uh, you, you have been to Hawaii? Oh, yes. We went there this summer, Mr. Mayor. Uh, did the volcano erupt while you were there? Oddly enough, it did. What do you mean, oddly enough? Don't you want any barbecued chick? Hmm. Oh, well. All the more for us. Dad, rather look at that fire. Don't seem to keep it going. Hey, I know what it needs. Look, I'll throw this in. Oh, <laughs> heavenly days. Look at that. Yeah. It flared up like somebody had used the bellows on it. Mm -hmm. What'd you throw on it, McGee? My draft card from 1918. <laughs> sure, you see, with the draft... Hey, Molly. Hey, Molly. Here's Harlow Milcox. <laughs> Hi, Milky. Hi, Fibber. Hi, Molly. Oh, we're glad you could come to the barbecue, Mr. Milcox. I mean, Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't have missed it, Molly. the trivia here? Said he would be. He saw you coming, milkman, and evaporated. <laughs> he went to Honolulu, Mr. Wilcox. Uh, by the way, I hope you like barbecued chicken. That's what we're having. Oh, I'm mad about it, Molly. And what's this over here? Coleslaw? Hey, 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 hey. Lay off of that coleslaw, Junior. That's to go with the chicken. Oh, he's just tasting it, dearie. Mmm, I'm good, too. Hey, this tastes like the pet milk recipe, Molly. It is, Mr. Wilcox. I've been cooking with pet milk for years. And this coleslaw is so easy. You just mix salt, vinegar, sugar, pet milk. Oh, I know the recipe, Molly. And you're smart to use pet milk whenever you can because you, you see... said it, Junior. Did you know you can take a can of pet milk and mix the same amount of water with it and it's still richer than ordinary bottled milk? Well, certainly, pal. That's because pet milk is so... Double rich, double rich. You're so right, Mr. Wilcox. Pet is so rich you can use it in coffee. Yes, but what I wanted to say you think was... think that because we got a new sponsor that pet milk is new to us? 
My gosh, Molly's been using pet milk for... Look, 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 pal, I think you ought to know. The pet milk is simply good, sweet country milk. Concentrated to double richness. Oh, we know that, Mr. Wilcox, we do. <laughs> you know, you're quite a salesman, Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> Well, gee, I've been selling since I was eight years old. Made my first two million dollar deal when I was eight. Wow, a two million dollar deal. Eight years old? Yep. Traded a million dollar tricycle for a million dollar slingshot. <laughs> to a kid named Wormhead Williams. Well, if you traded a million dollar tricycle for a million dollar slingshot, where was the profit? No, he let me keep his mud turtle for a couple of days. Oh. By the way, pal, they. <laughs> May I tell you something? Something personal. Why, sure, boy. Your apron is on fire. Yeah. Oh, it's easy. It's easy. Ah. My gosh. What? Why didn't you say so? Well, I guess you tried to. There. Oh, it's out now. That rabbit sold the fire. McGee, let me take those chickens in and fry them. You'll never have them cooked. No, sir. By George, I'm going to barbecue. Oh, hi, old timer. Oh, oh, hi, you old hi. timer. I'm sure glad you asked me to come, kids. When do we eat? Yeah. As soon as these dad rather chickens barbecue. They don't seem to... Do you like barbecues, do you, uh, Mr. Uh, old timer? Do I like barbecues? Daughter, you sure asked the right party. It was my grandma that invented them. Your grandmother invented barbecues? She sure did, kids. Yeah. It was even named after her. Her name being Barbara Beatrice Quigley. bar b q <laughs> Oh, now, wait a minute. I don't believe... Yes, sir, I... kids. Grandma was the first white woman, a rather red and white woman, being half Cherokee Indian, west of Illinois to do backyard cooking for the fun of it. Yeah. Had a big five-holer wood-burning range right there in the kitchen, too. But Grandma always grew to build a bonfire and roast a few slices of buffalo hump outdoors. <laughs> Till one night in the autumn of 1872. <laughs> After that night, Grandma never so much as basted a mush rat again. Heavenly days. What happened? Maybe she used the wrong gin in the crepe Suzette. Well, sir, meat was kind of scarce that season on account of prairie fires, and yeah. all Grandma uh, uh, could shoot for the pot that day was a great big skinny moose. Seems enough for a small snack to me. Well, sir, Grandpa racks up his powder horn and says, Barbie, he says, can you barbecue a moose? Grandma looks at him kind of contemptuous and says, Buck, she says. I always called him Buck because he was so easy spent. <laughs> says, I can cook anything that flies, walks, grunts, howls, waddles, swims, or lays eggs. So Grandpa flang the moose and hard for the hired hands to wash up. <laughs> That's when formal dining meant take your rifle off your knees and lean it against the wall, eh? Well, sir, in a few minutes, Grandma made a curtsy with a little white apron and announced that dinner was served. She said, come and get it, you cactus heads, or I'll throw it out. Forty minutes later, everybody sat back and agreed it was the finest eating they'd ever did. Just gorged themselves. Hello. How did you ever get that scrawny old moose to tender, they says. And Grandma says, well, I ain't got around to cooking the moose yet. Them was just the antlers. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Mr. Oldtimer, uh, what was the big catastrophe? Uh, why didn't she barbecue anymore? That was her last day, daughter. She reached into the wood pile for some kindling and got bit by a sidewinder. Oh, dear. Her headstone is a historical marker just west of Naked Joe, Missouri. Hmm. It says, Here lies Barbara B.Q., 1810 to 72. Bit by a rattler when she wasn't looking. At last, she's where she knows what's cooking. <laughs> That wrapped this fire. Hand me another box of matches, somebody. Here you are, pal, and that's six boxes you've used so far. If you'd lit those matches one at a time and held them under the chickens, they'd have been done by now. Now, don't torment him, doctor, please. Hey, Johnny, you better turn them chickens over. They ain't cooking, but they're all smoked up on the bottom side. They are too cooking. Can't you smell them? That's you, pal. Your apron's on fire again. <laughs> to baste yourself with a barbecue sauce, Johnny, you'll be done before the chickens. <laughs> uh, ah, pipe down. I got trouble enough. 
What's the matter with these chickens, Molly? I've had a fire under them 15 times, and they're still as raw as Russian propaganda. It's getting dark here, too. It's getting cloudy. I could have this dinner ready in 10 minutes, dearie. Just let me cut the chickens up and fry them, won't you? No, sir. Not on your life. But somebody can help me blow on this fire. This charcoal... Oh, here comes Oli. Hi, Oli. Oh, hello, Oli. Hi. Yeah, hello right, Mrs. Nice. Hello, order people. Hey, why you don't set fire to the fire, McGee? You can't barbecue without a fire. <laughs> Doggone it, I'm trying to set fire to it. I've been trying to get this fire going for an hour. <laughs> Come on, Oli, blow, will you? Look, McGee. <laughs> You make up your mind. First you invite me to come to barbecue, and now you tell me to blow. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Hippus. Nice to see you. Oh, no, right. Ollie. No, he didn't mean that. Of course not. I want you to help me blow on this charcoal. What's the matter with this fire, anyhow? Well, only one thing I can see, Johnny. It's out. <laughs> you know, this looks like quite a mess you make here, McGee. Reminds me of a little yingle I hear on the uke box. Yeah? If I knew this was coming, I'd have booked a cook. <laughs> You an expert on this stuff, Ollie? Well, sure, Mr. Wilcox. I got complete equipment for barbecue at my house. What McGee needs is an electric expectorator. An electric what? Expectorator, Mrs. You use stick the chickens on and it keeps turning them over. Oh, you mean a spit? Please, we don't say that in front of you. Look, if all you experts would stop giving me the big lip and give me a little hand, we might get these chickens cooked. Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, now, boys, one fun. at a time, though. Here, Ollie, you're in charge of the furnace at the Elks Club. You ought to know how to build a fire. Sure, Mrs. Stood back, McGee. What you need here is a little draft underneath. Huh? There's the poker. Well, never mind the poker. I use my fingers. Be careful oh. now. <laughs> Heavenly please. Right up. That's a wonderful fire, Oli. See there, I told you it'd burn if you'd just be patient. Hey, get them kick- chickens cooked, Johnny. It's coming on dark awful fast. My pepper plates. Hey, look at me. Hey, it does look stormy. I'd hate to have this broken up by a rainstorm. <laughs> Don't worry, I got that taken care of, too. I called the Weather Bureau and they promised... Me... No, but you... Oh, my God. Let's get the I'll out. take the call, Hey, we'll have to get out. Don't bring the... Hey, hey, wait! The barbecue! The fire! Don't leave me here in the... Hey, wait! Hey! cigar. <laughs> Hair full of charcoal and my shoes full of wet feet. All them wise guys sitting there in the living room, smoking my cigars and drinking my root beer and laughing at me. Worked on them dead ratted chickens for two hours and there's no sign. McGee! Come in out of the wet and go join the boys. Don't sit there on the porch muttering to yourself. You'll catch cold. Uh, I hope I do. I hope I catch an awful cold. What? I hope I get double the moon. No, just the cold. <laughs> Come on in the kitchen, dearie. All oh, my work. Barbecuing them chickens and they never did get cooked. Hey, what you doing in the kitchen? What I've been wanting to do all day. I'm frying the barbecued chicken. Oh. Get washed up. I thought I was, but I will. <laughs> Fibber and Molly return in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we started a new series of shows for Pet Milk. We'd like to say it's pleasant to be on the air for such a famous, quality product. <laughs> 
And for such nice people as the Pet Milk Company. You know, it was considered pretty wonderful when Henry Ford improved on the horse, but who would have thought somebody would do better than a cow? <laughs> Medical authorities agree that this product is splendid for babies' formulas. So we hope our association with pet milk is nearly in its infancy.